guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Melissa and we talk about all things plants and obviously sometimes my gardening in the summertime. Today I am going to be doing a midsummer garden update. If you missed my first garden update video when we planted everything and then I showed you a month later in that same video a little bit of an update, um, I'll link that above and down below in the uh, description. It has been about a month since I have uploaded that particular video and so much is blooming and growing and it's so exciting to see. So come along with me and enjoy this little garden tour, tour of my garden. A little bit of a background on what is going on here. I live in Winnipeg, Manitoba, more like north near the White Shell, which is a zone three area for all perennials or your garden. Here in Canada, we've been having an extreme drought this year. So a lot of our fruit trees and stuff around the property have not been producing as much as they normally have. And with that being said, a lot of the things growing in my garden are kind of a little bit sad despite me watering them very, very often. So let's just jump into this little midsummer garden tour. So first up, I'm gonna start just on this bigger garden that we have. These are some runner beans and then we have some purple beans right here. Everything seems to be growing really well. I was super impressed with these in the first video that I did. Literally after like two weeks, they started growing and everything looks so gorgeous and pretty. Um, as you can see here on these runner beans, um, some beautiful flowers. My daughter likes to pick them and whenever they get a little bit like this, I kind of just guide it to, wow, well, okay, might be a little bit too short, but I, I kind of just guide it to go back down so it can climb all over this little trellis that we have made. Just here at the end of the runner beans are a small cherry tomato which is being choked out by this runner bean. As you can see these flowers belong to the runner bean and you can see here it's kind of kind of trying to choke this guy out but I'm just gonna let it be. Sometimes you just need to let nature do its thing and there are some tomatoes on there so high hopes. Moving on to our beets, our beets, oh look, a weed. <laughs> I try to do my best. Actually, it's literally grass. Our beets aren't as big as um, our ones in the city. They are still pretty small. I'm curious to know how your beets are doing if you live in zone three or in Manitoba because I'm pretty disappointed in these. Um, I'm pretty disappointed in quite a few things in this particular garden, but I will get to that just shortly. But these are my beets. Right here, these are supposed to be cucamelons, which is kind of like a mix between a cucumber and a melon, watermelon, I do believe. Again, very sad. Um, they are not big and we're nearing the end of July, so. They only have one more month, so I um, have high hopes, except for this random one. I don't know if it's the same. Um, if you know how what this leaf is, identify. Sometimes we have a lot of just random things because we compost a lot. So this could just be a watermelon or a cucumelon. And then, as you can see, there's like this tiny little random tomato. I don't even know where that came from. Again, we compost a lot, so sometimes. This one's kind of starting to vine out, but still, again, they're very small. Moving on to the regular English cucumbers that we have. Again, these ones are quite small. Um, the ones in Winnipeg are doing much better. I don't know if it's the soil. We don't have the greatest soil out here. We do compost a lot, but I don't know if it's a thing of underwatering or overwatering. Let me do know down in the comments if you how often you water your gardens, um, especially when there is no water coming from the heavens above and you were just doing it yourself. But these are my cucumbers, wish me luck. All right, so here we have a few different things. It's kind of chaotic here, but here is just another one of those random, I don't know, watermelon, a squash, um, but it has the same leaf pattern on it as the other one. And then we have four like cherry tomatoes. Um, there is this one, there's that one, there's that one back there. And then this one is kind of like the run to the four. Um, 
I grew all these tomatoes from seed. They seem to be doing very well. There's tomatoes on every single one of them. And these tomatoes are kind of unique. They're kind of like an oval shape with stripes on them. Super excited for that. And then just in the middle here, we have a beautiful flower on this. I don't know what it is. It randomly showed up out of nowhere. It's a squash or a zucchini. I'm kind of hoping it's a zucchini only because we didn't plant any zucchinis this year. I don't know why. And then just in the middle there between is a marigold. Here was just a little practice little area. Um, again, this little squash or zucchini and this guy right here, they popped up on their own, but you can see there is a basil right there. And then we also have some dill. We did plant the dill and we did plant the basil, but the squash, I don't know what that is. That looks like some sort of herb, but it could be just a weed. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'll have to ask David about that one. All right, so moving on to these two rows, these two jungle rows, <laughs> these are where our squash and our eggplants and our watermelons reside. A um, little backstory on how we do this. We kind of, we, we, we weed at the beginning um, of the planting year, but because squash bush out like crazy, um, we kind of just let it do its thing. Um, we are going to be mowing in between here, but uh, yeah, we kind of just let them do its thing. If we see really big thistles or grass, we obviously pull them out so the vegetables don't get choked out. But let's do a little bit of a tour. Starting at the end here, we have a watermelon, which is just starting to, I think, produce. Possibly there's one there. And then there's another one right here. <laughs> so wish me luck that these actually grow into a cute little watermelon. The majority of the rest are, there is one like patty pan squash and then the rest I believe are just spaghetti squash. We love spaghetti squash because they last a very long time. If you didn't know, if you put them in a dark cooler place in your home, they will last you until next next spring um, if properly properly stored so we definitely love the spaghetti squash and as you can see it's almost the end of J july and we have so many squ sp spaghetti squ blah, blah, blah. <laughs> spaghetti squash i think i counted eight of them already that one's still a little bit small along with this one but each plant has so many flowers this here is a patty pan. These aren't doing very well. Every time they grow, they seem to fall off. Um, so I'm not sure why. If you know, let me know. Here we have some more spaghetti squash. This spaghetti squash has two. So we have this little guy. And then we also have this guy right here. And then we have this, I think there's three plants right here. Um, lots of flowers. So yes, there are, I think three plants here and this plant has two and look you guys, this one is like ready to be picked. I can't even, I'm so excited. So there's two there. And then if we just go over to the end here, we have one more. So did you count those? Cause I think I counted about eight. So that's super exciting. On to the other row. Unfortunately, there are no, fruit or vegetables on these ones actually see there are a few um, I think I picked one of these off see I'm gonna pick that off because that's not gonna produce anything and then the energy can focus on the ones that actually will grow these might be spaghetti squash or these might be something else I'm not sure and there is a marigold there here we have two potatoes oh no there's three um, three little potato bunches <laughs> another marigold and you guys this is my favorite these are eggplants these are eggplants these are in the squash family i don't like eggplants i think that they are yucky <laughs> but david grew them and i'm fascinated as how they are growing i am so fascinated i'm gonna throw up on the screen right now a picture of when they first started growing and it looked just like this all i could see was this husk and then a week later I saw like it got a little bit bigger and then the next week from last week to this week oh my god I can't even they're so big how cute they're like squishy and they're so cute I can't wait till they grow purple there's different sizes these are like the cutest vegetable to grow I highly suggest doing it even if you don't like them <laughs> 
So David's determined this year to make me some egg eggplant parmesan, and I'm so excited because I'm I, they're so cute. And then lastly, we have one more marigold, and David says that's a um, orange squash, or no, a red pumpkin. That is a red pumpkin we got from someone local around here. So hopefully that produces a red pumpkin because that would be really cool. Now I'm just gonna quickly show you um, a couple flowers. So here's some marigolds, some canna lilies, and some sunflowers in the middle. These sunflowers are not that big, as you can see. We always ponder how the farmers get their uh, sunflowers so huge and like they're already blooming. And ours are just tiny. <laughs> if you have any suggestions, let me know. Maybe we need to be feeding them more with some fertilizer. But let's go check out my front garden. All right, so just a little backstory on this front garden. So it's like July 28th or something today, and we put this garden in, this flower garden, in May 15th, which was my birthday. Um, I'll show you some progress pics. David kind of dug everything out. It was a mess. It's always been a mess in this little garden, and we put a lot of things in here. Next year, we will probably just mindful of what we put in here because a lot of them have like taken over. Here's a little sneak peek. But let's get into our little flower garden. All right so starting on one side we have this is like an Egyptian papyrus. It has grown so much. I think I like the idea of having taller things in this planter and then as you can see this potato vine I kind of like put it wherever and this one's huge. <laughs> I think I would probably do one more in the middle and then have it kind of like just sprawled all over like cascading over but we have the papyrus in the back again I'm going to show you a picture of when we first planted this because you'll you'll never believe how much this is pushed out um and this is nicotina I have a lot of deadheading to do but nicotina we grew these from seed um there's some purple and there's some pink Right here we have, this is like a walking stick kale. Unfortunately, we had those white moths that pretty much attack the entire thing. Um, if anyone has like suggestions on how to like get rid of them, um, because we had no idea. We didn't know what was eating it and then we looked and there were those little worms, but they have obviously turned into their white moths and they have destroyed my kale. <laughs> Way back in the bottom there are some petunias. Like I said, this was an experiment. Um, I wouldn't put something like that there again because as you can see, you literally can't even see it. <laughs> um, just in the front here, these are, would you believe those are peppers? I'm sorry, but like, this leaf is as big as my hand. <laughs> these peppers are absolutely out of control. <laughs> this soil is very nice. It's brand new soil. And as you can see, we even have some peppers. But like, look at how chonky this stalk is. It's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> um, lots of peppers coming. In the back here, we have three canna lilies blooming, of course. I love the idea of the canna lilies in the back because those can grow very, very tall. Um, again, I threw in this little German ivy just for fun, and then again, more of those petunias. I guess there's a little bit of a spot here where you can see them, but they definitely get crowded over there. Another potato vine. This, I'm not sure what it is. Um, we planted it from seed, and it kind of just like exploded. It kind of looks like a coleus, but I think it's like a Jacob's Ladder. I definitely love it. <laughs> I'll probably bring it in. This is a castor bean. Um, they can grow as tall as your house and they thrive in like bright sun. But warning, it is very poisonous. All parts of it. So um, you definitely need to be mindful when you're planting these. Um, there is another little canna lily poking through back there. And here we have an elephant's ear. Unfortunately, the elephant's ear, not doing the greatest. Um, this leaf is about to unfurl. But yeah, it's not as big as we were hoping, so we probably won't do that one again. And then here in a pot, we have just a little, they're like green, green chili peppers. So yeah, and that is an overview of my beautiful front garden. All right, you guys, and that is the end of my mid-summer garden tour and flower tour out here in the country. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comment section below if you live in Winnipeg, Manitoba, or if you are zone two, three, or four, because those are lower zones, especially for perennials that you have a hard time finding things 
uh, to plant outside. But let me know down in the comment section below and I guess I'll see you guys next time. XOXO MM. Bye!